Hello friends, today we will discuss multiple stress creep recovery or MSCR test on modified binders. It is also called the GNR difference or determination of GNR difference. Now this MSCR test is the latest addition to the performance grade specification for asphalt binders and this test is given in ASTO DP70 and also in ASTO MP19. It provides the user with a new high temperature binder specification that more accurately indicates the rutting potential of the binder irrespective of the type of modification. A major benefit of this test is that it eliminates the need to run tests such as elastic recovery or toughness which are particularly designed to indicate polymer modification of asphalt binders. A single MSCR test can provide information on both performance and formulation of the asphalt binders. The material response in MSCR test is significantly different than the response in the existing PG test and in the existing PG test we determine rutting parameter as G star by sin delta. In the performance grading system, the high temperature parameter G star by sin delta is measured by applying an oscillating load to the binder at very low strain. And due to this low strain level, the PG high temperature parameter does not accurately represent the ability of polymer modified binders to register it. And therefore, GNR is considered to be superior to G star by sin delta. Under the very low levels of stress and strain present in dynamic modulus testing, the polymer network is never really activated. In the existing PG specifications, the polymer is really measured as a filler that stiffens the asphalt. Whereas in the case of MSCR test, higher levels of stress and strain are applied to the binder and that gives a better understanding of what occurs in an actual payment. By using the higher levels of stress and strain in the MSCR test, the response of the asphalt binder captures not only the stiffening effect of the polymer, but also the delayed elastic effects, where the binder behaves like a rubber band. Now, how this JNR is actually related to rutting? The relationship of JNR to actual rutting was evaluated using accelerated loading facility at FSWA on test sections constructed with multiple neat and modified binders. And these sections included neat binder, air blown binder, SBS modified binder, crumb rubber modified binder and other modified binders. The sections were then heated to 64 degrees centigrade and traffic it with a single, super single tire loaded to 10,000 pounds. Rutting of the test section was compared to both G star by sin delta and also the MSCR high temperature parameter GNR. And the test sections clearly showed the improved performance relationship of MSCR test over the standard super pave PG high temperature binder criteria that is G star by sin delta. And that you can see here also. When this ALF rutting was plotted against JNR and when it is plotted against G star by sin delta at 64 degrees centigrade, the correlation between rutting and JNR is much better than that in the case of G star by sin delta. A major difference between the new MSCR specification and the old super pave high temperature specification is how grade bumping is done. In old super pave specification grade, bumping was done by increasing the test temperature for the binder and keeping the required test result the same that is value of G star by sin delta 2.2. Under the old system, if the standard grade is a PG64 based on climate and due to heavy traffic and the agency wants two grade bumps, they would specify a PG76. This required testing at 76 degrees centigrade for a 76 minus 22 binder in a 64 degrees centigrade climate. Truly speaking, the payment will never see this high temperature 
it is just an artificial way of requiring a stiffer, stiffer binder by testing at a higher temperature. In the case of MSCR specification, the binder testing is done at the high environmental temperature that the pavement is expected to experience. If the climate grade is PG64, do all testing at 64 degrees centigrade. And if the heavy traffic is expected, then the specification requirement is changed. That is, a lower value of JNR is required. So we do not change the temperature, but we change the requirement of the parameter. Here, in the case of old specification, we keep the same requirement of the result, that is, G star by sine delta should be 2.2, and we change the temperature. That is the main difference in grade bumping. So, what exactly is the MSCR test? MSCR test uses well-established creep and recovery test concept to evaluate the binder's setting potential. Using, a, using the dynamic shear rheometer, a one second creep load is applied on a sample of binder and then it is removed. After that, the binder is allowed to recover for nine seconds. Now, this figure shows the typical strain time relationship for one cycle of loading and unloading of the specimen. The test is started with an application of low stress that is 0.1 kPa for 10 creep recovery cycles and then it is increased to 3.2 kPa and additional 10 cycles of creep and recovery are carried out. The material response in MSCR test is significantly different than the response in the G star by sine delta test. High temperature parameter G star by sine delta is measured by applying an oscillating load to the binder at very low strain. And as I told you earlier, this low strain does not truly represent the ability of polymer modified binder to resist the rutting. This test can be done on same DSR that is used for determination of G star by sine delta. And this test as in case of G star by sine delta is also done on RTFO aged sample or you can say short term aged sample. So binder is first short term aged using rolling thin film oven test as we do in case of G star by sine delta. And then this is used to prepare the specimen for this MSCR test and the size of a specimen is the same as in case of G star by sine delta. Now, once this specimen is prepared, then in the software, you choose the asphalt MSCR test as per ASTO and simultaneously, you place this specimen between the plates. Select the test temperature going through this software and here we are selecting a temperature of 76 degrees centigrade and once this temperature is reached, you can see here on the screen the temperature of 76 degrees centigrade is reached. So you now trim the specimen and trimming is done similar to what we did in case of G star by sine delta. After that, now it is ready for testing. Now some software give the data in the tabular form like this. And when you see zero here, it means it is a recovery period. When you say a pressure here, 0.1 kPa, it is the loading cycle. You can see the how, how this strain is applied here and then it recovers. Whereas there are some software in DSR which provide these strain versus time relationship directly. Rather than plotting from this table, you can also get these directly from the software. So that is how you would carry out the MSCR test. So in MSCR test, 
for each cycle of loading and unloading there will be two components of a strain one is recovered strain another is unrecovered strain and for each cycle you determine the percent recovery at 0.0 kpa and also at 3.2 kpa and percent recovery at 0.0 kpa in one cycle is recovered strain divided by total strain multiplied by 100 and you calculate this value for each cycle and then take average of all 10 cycles and percent recovery at 0.1 kpa is let us say r100 then similarly you calculate the average of all 10 cycles of percent recovery at 3.2 kpa and let that be r3200 then percent difference in recovery between 0.1 kpa and at 3.2 kpa is R100 minus R3200 divided by R100. That is R difference. Now, for each of the 10 cycles at a creep stress of 0.1 kPa, calculate the non recoverable creep compliance and then take average of these 10 values to get the average J and R100. Find average of 10 cycles of non recoverable creep compliance at a creep stress of 3.2 kPa also and let that be J and R. 3200. Then JNR difference is calculated by this equation JNR 100 minus JNR 3200 divided by JNR 100. Now this is important that is non recoverable strain. So MSCR grades and JNR requirement as suggested in ASTO code are like this. So here you have JNR at 3.2 kPa and here you have MSCR grade. This is standard grade, so JNR value specified is higher. You have heavy conditions of traffic, very heavy condition of traffic, exceptionally heavy conditions, and then you keep on adding all those extreme conditions of traffic or speed. Accordingly, the value of JNR will reduce. IS 15462 2019 suggests JNR difference value of maximum 75% at test temperature of 64, 70, 76, 82, 76. That is the higher temperature of the grade of the binder. Now, this JNR difference remains same for all grades of binder and for all conditions of traffic. The variation in the parameter is the JNR at 3.2 kPa. It is 4.5 per kPa when the traffic conditions is standard reduces to 2 when it is heavy traffic to 1 when very heavy traffic and 0.5 per kPa when extremely heavy traffic conditions. Now what are these conditions of traffic as given in IS 15462? Standard service conditions is when traffic is less than 10 MSA and speed is more than 70 km per hour. Heavy service conditions are when traffic is 10 to 30 MSA or the slow moving vehicle that is the speed of the vehicle is 12, 20 to 70 km per hour. Very heavy service conditions are when traffic is more than 30 MSA or you have very slow moving traffic or standing traffic less than 20 km per hour. And extremely heavy service conditions are when traffic is more than 30 MSA and there is slow moving traffic means both conditions are satisfied less than 20 km per hour. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you understood this new concept of MSCR. You can write your suggestion in the comment box.